Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we will be talking about buoyancy force generated by thermal gradient inside a bulk fluid. This is very important because if you are working with any kind of natural convection problem, heat driven buoyancy flow or anything like that, then you need to know how exactly you need to model this particular task in COMSOL. Again, for this particular task, we'll be taking help of an application library file, which you always have access to. So there is a file on buoyancy water in the application library of COMSOL. So let us learn from that file because they have generated multiple files in their application library. And if you go through it, then it will be helpful. It will help you to develop your own research problem. But as I always discuss, it is not only learning about the application file, it is about understanding the equations and how exactly we can modify those equations. We can put add-on terms in the equation or we can approximate the equations. Those are important. So this particular thing will be modeled using two physics. One is laminar flow and heat transfer in fluids. Along with that, the most important part is don't forget to add non-isothermal flow coupling. So again, in this video, I'll be talking about flow coupling or any kind of multi-physics coupling in COMSOL. Before that, let us proceed with understanding the equations in the fluid flow. So that may be a repetitive for a regular viewers, but I'll be talking about this laminar flow once again. So we are initially working with the stationary flow. So in stationary flow, we don't have any temperature time dependent term. We start the Navier-Stokes equation or in general, we should not tell it, we should not call it Navier-Stokes equation because Navier-Stokes equation is an approximated equation that is valid with certain assumptions like you should have a Newtonian fluid, you should have certain other criteria like it has to be incompressible. If all those criteria are maintained, then you can use Navier-Stokes equation. But for a generic purpose, it would be divergence of pressure along with certain quantity and that certain quantity could be hydrodynamic stress and that stress can be different from your Newtonian fluid. But again, this laminar flow, we are working with laminar flow so we can actually consider this equation as navier stokes because ultimately we will be considering a constant density, incompressibility and also the other conditions. So uh, let me quickly explain. This is the convective term. This is the pressure gradient term. This is hydrodynamic stress, divergence of hydrodynamic stress. This is any external forces. If you add so external force, you can add from here. You can right click and then there will be volume forces. If you add volume force, then it will be giving you one F such that you can add multiple external volume forces and this is coming for the gravity. So gravity is very important whenever we are dealing with natural convection or thermal driven convective flow because the idea is when you have, I mean, why exactly buoyancy happens because when water get heated, the density is reduced and because of that, the higher density water that is cold liquid or cold water that comes down and the lower density water goes up and this happens in a cyclic way and that's why we get a convective flow. So you can't neglect this rho g term. Again, I'm telling you have to click on this include gravity in order to have this particular term. If you uncheck it, it will be omitted. You can see uh, the rho g is vanished, but you should not make it vanish if you are working with buoyancy flow. So how exactly this is modeled? So they have defined walls 
all the valves are kept at no slip condition so this is a closed vessel basically that's why in this particular case we don't have any inlet or any outlet i have already mentioned about this gravity this pressure point constraint is used for the convergence purpose i have a separate video on it i will try to put the link in the description box so that you can have a look what pressure point constraint is so in this particular node we define the fluid properties this is being taken from the material and as you know material will be defined under material section so this is water now we go to the heat transfer physics uh, if you expand the equation in the stationary term you can see this is a uh, heat transfer in fluids it has convective term it has the diffusive term the divergence of q and it has additional terms but all those things should be zero for this particular case so those things will not be contributing we have a fluid because this is heat transfer in fluid so you need to define your fluid so again the this fluid is coming from this velocity field non isothermal velocity field and the other properties are coming from the direct from the material initial values uh, this is important so this tc is temperature of the cold part and th is temperature of the hot part it is defined as parameters in the parameter list so you can see they have defined tc is equal to 283 kelvin they have defined th as tc plus delta t wherein delta t is 10 kelvin that means there is a temperature difference of 10 degree and that creates the convective flow which we are going to study all other relevant parameters which are necessary for this particular simulation those are enlisted whenever it is necessary i will talk about it so here the main thing comes so under heat transfer in fluids they define a temperature tc and the left hand side that is cold part so the left hand part is the cold part right hand part is the hot part so there is a temperature gradient and this temperature gradient will change the density of water and how exactly they are uh, taking care of that density change that they, they are basically taking care of this density change by this non isothermal coupling option so this particular task is already defined in the background algorithm of comsol so what we need to learn is in order to include that convective flow natural convections heat driven convection we need to use non isothermal flow with the non isothermal flow coupling now one important part is this bosonowski approximation uh, this is very i mean the mechanical and chemical engineers are familiar with this term if not i will talk about this particular terminology in some other video but you may just google it and you can learn about this bosonowski approximation but in a layman language i will talk i will tell that this particular term takes care of the density change due to the thermal variation so this is the heart of the story if you don't take this you will not be able to model convective flow so that was all about fluid flow heat transfer coupling and all so now we'll go for the simulation let us run the simulation the stationary flow they have uh, gone for other studies as well but for today's discussion we'll be restricting to stationary study which we have already started it will take few seconds only let us wait for the simulation ending i hope yeah the simulation is running i'll pause the video and it'll come back yeah the simulation is done and you can see this is the velocity profile uh, what we have plotted we have plotted uh, SPFU that is the velocity and you can see uh, we have plotted arrow surface if I reduce the number of arrows it will be clearly visible suppose I reduce it to 30 
arrow proportional okay so now you can see so that was the cold part that was the hot part so there is a convective flow happening due to this you can see this is uh, this is the way the fluid is moving so we can actually change the color if we make it say white it will be yeah clearly visible so we have changed the color of the arrow so you can see the fluid is coming from here it will come down if i zoom it here you can see the fluid is coming down along this way so in a circular way it is moving uh, let us look at the temperature profile because this is important so as you can see i mean it, it was the colder part so uh, indicated by more reddish zone and this was the hotter part and this is indicated by yellow that means a higher temperature as the fluid is moving uh, we have uh, a gradient along y direction as well so if you look at here what is happening so the fluid that is getting heated that is going up under gravity and that is why at the bottom zone you have less temperature that means colder fluid so this is mimicking your real situation so when we boil water what happens the colder fluid comes down and you can see in the simulation also this zone is colder in water boiling the same thing happens colder fluid comes down and the hotter fluid goes up and that is what is happening here so this is the way you can mimic your case that means you can actually model a natural convection your case might be more complicated so that is why people keep on working on research problem you may have multiple other approximations you may have multiple other forces so that you can actually include as body forces so today i stop here i hope this video was helpful if so then kindly share our videos so that we get more motivation to upload videos thank you